Hello, I'm Ruben Shoup. I am the YA horror author of Vampire Juice. And this morning, we are continuing reading Haunted Fear Street number seven. This is part eight. Now, we're at the point where Mel Melissa, the only one who can see the ghost, Paul, is, um, discovers that Paul was the, is the Fear Street Prowler. Now, what, and Paul Well, Melissa is trying to convince the real Paul, not the ghost Paul, that he's going to get, get killed. But things don't go as planned. So, here we are. The Fear Street Prowler. Melissa dropped her feet to the floor, but didn't stand up. Was this really happening? She heard this scrabbling sounds again and a loud noise that she recognized as a ladder being banged against the the clabbards. It, it all seemed to be happening in slow motion. She looked at the what in the world just happened. Oh my gosh. I don't understand. The internet just flurged or spurged. Oh my gosh. This is irritating. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry about this. All right, here we are. It, it, the, the she looked at the clock, still twelve thirteen. Time wasn't moving at all. She suddenly felt as if her heart had stopped too, frozen at 12.13. I've stopped breathing, she thought. I can't breathe. I can't move. No, this isn't happening. I can't let this happen to me. She forced herself to stand up. She took a deep breath, then another. Paul, she called to the ghost in a quivering voice. Paul, help me. No reply. With a trembling hand, she reached over and turned on the lamp on the bed table. Maybe that would discourage him. Maybe the light would make him go away. She stood there frozen by the bed, watching the window. Go away, go away, go away. She saw an arm reach up from outside the window and push the window open. Then she saw the long black hair, then the denim jacket. He stopped easily in he stepped easily into the room, the curtain billowing behind him. Paul he brushed off his jeans and scowled at her. Was it the ghost or was it the live Paul? I told you, he said, staring into her eyes. I told you I knew where you lived. It was the live Paul. Get out of here, Paul, Melissa said. She had moved from beside the bed. Get out of my house. She realized she was only slightly relieved that it was Paul and not the fear street prowler. Paul looked dangerous, as dangerous as any, as any prowler. And he looked so cold, Melissa thought, cold and calm, not the least bit nervous about breaking into my house. <clears throat> he, 
He stepped into the it, he stepped to the center of the room. His dark hair <clears throat> fell over his forehead. I told you, he repeated. I told you, I knew. Please, Paul. I'm not good enough for you, huh? Let's not talk about it now, okay? She backed away from him until she was against the wall. You've been drinking, and and I just want you to go. But I've come to show you how good I am. His mouth formed an ugly smile. Cold, menacing smile. I'm, I'm good enough, really. I'm really good, Paul. I'll call the police. He snickered. I'm too fast for the police. Go home, Paul. Go home, and I won't tell anyone you did this. I'm all alone here, she thought suddenly. I'm all alone in this house with him. She had stood up to him till now. She could feel the bravery wearing off, feel the terror taking over. He could do anything, she thought, watching him come toward her. She remembered her vow to the ghost, I will never kill you, never, never, never. But watching this smirking, cold-eyed, Paul approached. The words seemed empty, false. What if he tried to kill her? Would she fight back? Would she defend herself? No, no, no. This can't be happening. I can't kill him. But what if? Come on, Melissa. No more teasing. No more games. Tonight's the night. No. Go away. I mean it. I just, I mean it. Just turn around and go, go back out the window. But I'm good enough for you, Melissa. You'll see. I'm real good. He spoke quietly, but his eyes revealed excitement. Every word s sounded a threat. Suddenly, a picture flashed into Melissa's mind. The pistol. The little silver pistol. I, it was right there in front of her just a few feet away in her father's night table, waiting, waiting for her, waiting to protect her from Paul. No, 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 no way. She wouldn't shoot it, of course. She would only use it to frighten him away. She was so alone, so totally alone. Did she really have a choice? Was she about to make the ghost's prediction come true? I don't care, she thought. Her emotions swirling, staring at Paul, reading the hatred in his eyes. I don't care. I have to protect myself. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. No, no, I can't. She stood frozen against the wall, at, at war with herself, watching him approach. Then, without even consciously making it, the decision, she dived forward and pulled open the slender drawer. There it was, waiting, waiting for her. The small pistol seemed to shine in the lamplight. She hesitated for only a second. Then she grabbed it. It felt cool in the palm of her hand. My question is, why can Melissa see and feel this ghost? I've noticed that Arlo Stein keeps mentioning a pendant around her neck. I wonder if that has something to do with it. Paul grinned at her from across the bed. She raised the pistol, and his grin slowly faded. Get out, Paul, she cried, her voice trembling. She held the little pistol with both hands to keep it steady. Get out. Right now, I mean it. Whoa, babe. He, he raised his hands up as if in a surrender. Oh, get out. She took a cautious step toward him, pointing the pistol at him, studying his face. Wow, is that a real gun? He was making fun of her. It's real, she said. Please, just leave. He stared into her eyes and slowly lowered his hands. He seemed to be thinking it over, deciding what to do. Go now, and I won't tell anyone you did this, Melissa 
repeated. She gestured with the gun toward the door. Go, please, I'm begging you. But he didn't leave the room. Instead, he walked to the queen-sized bed with a quick, frightening motion, grabbed the bedspread, and tugged it off the bed. He let the bedspread drop to the floor and stepped over it and ran his hands over the smooth, pale blue sheets. Paul, what do you think you're doing? He smiled at her, his hands still on the sheet. Nice bed, he said. So fancy, so clean. I'm, I'm warning you. Come over here. Why don't you and me? He patted the bed. Oh, my goodness. She uttered a low cry and ran to the door. She didn't have a plan. She just knew she had to get out of there. He moved quickly and blocked the doorway. Melissa, Melissa couldn't stop herself. She ran into him. You're not going anywhere, he said, grabbing her by the shoulders and shoving her back. She stumbled, startled by the force of his push, but caught her balance against the foot of the bed. She gestured with, with the pistol, out, get out. Her voice revealed how, how terrified she was. He had blocked her path and shoved her. What else would he do? He took a few casual steps toward her. Go ahead, he said, an odd smile on his face. What? Go ahead. Use the gun. Shoot me. Melissa kept it pointed at his chest. Think I won't? He took a step toward her, then another. Go ahead. Use the gun. Go ahead. Paul, no. He came closer and closer. He was laughing at her now, challenging her, daring her to shoot him. Come on, girl, shoot me. Use the gun. Let's see you do it. No, stop right there. I mean it, Paul. But the but he kept coming, one step at a time. Her hand teased. The gun was pointed at his chest, just inches away from him. All she had to do was pull the trigger. But she knew she couldn't do it. No, 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 no way. She couldn't pull the trigger. She would never be able to pull the trigger. She started to lower the gun. No, I can't use it. Then I'll use it. Paul cried, swung his arm up fast, startling her. He grabbed at the pistol. She tried to pull her hand away but was too slow. His hand missed the gun and slapped against hers. The pistol dropped to the carpet. They both stared down at it for a long second. They both dived to the floor, scrambling frantically to reach it first. So who is going to get the gun? And what is going to happen? Ooh, this is getting interesting. Chapter 21. Melissa's elbow hit the floor hard as she dived. The pain shot up her arm as she reached for the pistol. I've, I've got it, she thought. But with the angry groan, Paul shoved her away. The gun fell out of her hand, and he picked it up. Breathing hard, his face crimson. He stood above her, waving the pistol in front of him. You rich snob, you're dead now. He kicked it. He kicked at her, but Melissa rolled away and climbed quickly to her feet. They stared at each other, breathing noisily. What good is all your money now, he cried. Melissa took a step back, eyeing the door. Put down the gun, Paul. Stop being so dramatic. You're not going to use it either. His eyes flared. Want to bet? He called her a stream of names. He could do it. He could shoot me. The bedroom door seemed so far away, and he was standing between her and the door. She held up her hands as if to say, Okay, I give up. His finger tightened on the trigger. He's going to shoot me, Melissa thought. I'm going to die now. She closed her eyes. When she opened them, the ghost was standing next to Paul. She blinked, thinking she was seeing double at first, flickering in and out of view, 
The ghost stared first at her, then at Paul. No, I can't let this happen, the ghost cried. Paul didn't react. Melissa realized he couldn't see the ghost. He kept the pistol aimed at her chest. I can't let him do this to you, the ghost cried. Melissa tried to scream, but no sound came out. The ghost hanged forward and reached for the pistol in Paul's hand. Melissa expected his hand to, st to sail tight right through the pistol, but it didn't. The live Paul cried out in surprise as the gun flew from his hand. With one quick motion, the ghost pulled the pistol away and tossed it toward Melissa. Hey, what the? Paul cried. The gun sailed across the room. Melissa had to jump up to catch it. As her hands wrapped around it, the gun went off. No! Her scream was so loud as the explosion of the sound between the hands. Paul groaned loudly and grabbed his chest. A dark red circle formed in, on the front of the denim jacket. Oh no, he groaned. Not me. He dropped to his knees. Blood trickled down onto the white carpet, holding his chest. He slumped face, he slumped face forward onto the rug. He didn't move. Paul! Melissa let the gun fall to the floor. The red puddle spread out from beneath Paul's body. Paul! Melissa ran forward, bent over, bent down over him, turned him over. Paul, he was dead. Chapter 22. Okay, so what is the aftermath math of this? Melissa stepped back from the body. She looked down and saw that her bare feet were stained with blood. Uh, oh no, no. The ghost was right beside her, staring down at Paul's body. So that's how it happened, he said. His voice soft, stunned whisper. But why? Why did you do it? Why did you sacrifice yourself? He didn't answer. Why did you knock the gun away, Paul? Why did you let me ki kill you? He stood so close to her, yet the air wasn't cold. I couldn't stand to see you kill, he said finally. What? But you knew I would kill I would kill Paul if you took the gun from him. Yes, I knew what would happen, he said, turning to look into her eyes. But I couldn't let him kill you. I care about you too much. I care about you too, Melissa cried. The ghost pulled her close and wrapped his arms around her. He pulled her face up to his and then and then and they kissed. I can feel you, Paul, Melissa cried. I really can. I can feel you now. She reached for him, but he flowed away from her. A sad smile on his face. He started to speak, but the words caught in his throat. I, I'm going, Melissa. I think I can rest now. I've been so ha unhappy, caught between two worlds, not knowing why. Not knowing what happened to me. Thank God it's over. But Paul, I won't forget you. I won't forget you. Don't feel guilty for killing me. Don't ever feel guilty. You were the only one who ever cared about me. The only, the only one. The words faded as he did. He was his shadow, then the outline of a shadow, and then he was gone. She stood staring at the spot where he had stood. She could still feel the arms around her, still feel the warmth of his lips. But she knew he was gone forever. It took her a long time to realize that someone was pounding on the front door. So who is at the front door? Who could it be this late? She stepped around Paul's body and ran to the bedroom window. She pulled it open and stuck her head out and looked below to the front porch. Buddy! He backed up to the edge of the porch and looked up at her illuminated by the yellow porch light. Buddy, what are you doing here? 
How did you? Lisa, are you okay? He shouted up to her. I went over to Dallas, but you weren't there. I got worried, so I came here. When I got out of my car, I heard a loud noise, like a gunshot. I was so worried. I'm, I'm okay, she called down. I'm so glad to see you. She ran down the stairs and pulled open the front door. I'm so glad you're here, she repeated. I need help. That's an understatement. She led him up to her parents' bedroom. He stopped short when he saw the body sprawled on the carpet. He grabbed her arm, his face filled with confusion. Lisa, is that your ghost? No, she said. That's not him. The ghost is gone, buddy. Gone for good. That's that's just some prowler. I'm so glad you're okay, he said, putting his arm around her. Thank God it's over. That's just what Paul said, Melissa thought. She leaned against Buddy as they walked downstairs to phone the police. And that's it. Can you believe it? That is it. So. And I haven't decided what I'm going to read next. I'm thinking Christopher Pike. Hmm? Hmm? And I'll probably do that in a few minutes. Okay, so. All right. I am the YA horror author of Vampire Juice. And if you like, if you like Fear Street, Goosebumps, this is the perfect book for you. And it's 99 cents. Yes, that's right. 99 cents. I am very proud of this book. Why do you ask? Because... Most of the reviews I get reference it to either Fear Street or Goosebumps. And that was the goal. So, if that's something you enjoy, my link is in the bio. And thank you for watching. And I am going about to end this. And then we're going to start doing Christopher Pike, The Last Vampire. <laughs>